Hey guys, Colleen here, DIYer behind LemonThistle.com, and today I'm excited to be back for a fall themed dollar store DIY challenge. This is the second video that I am making with a haul of stuff that I got from the dollar store last month when I did a partnership with my friend Christine and I'll link that last video down below but I had so much extra I wanted to make some more and I made these things for fall and then never put together the video to share with you so today I am doing that and these are my favorite DIYs out of the six that I've made total so I hope that you'll love them as much as I do. All right, so I had a lot of things left over after I made my three DIYs last month. So the first thing that I wanted to try is making some magnets using these little tiny wood slices here. So I kept it super simple. I just used line art on these and lettering on these. I used a fine tip paint marker that I had on hand. I'm sure that you could use a Sharpie as well. And I used a roll of magnets. Now, the magnets were self-adhesive, so they were easy to stick on the back of these, but I did find that the holding strength wasn't super awesome. If I were to do these again, I would get the round magnets that you can buy in packs from the dollar store instead of this roll of magnet, just so that it could hold more than one piece of paper, which at my house is a big deal for my kids. After I cut the magnets to size and stuck those on, I flipped them over and I started lettering. I made three different types of magnets here. I made a clean and dirty magnet for my dishwasher. I made an art magnet for each of my kids so that they can display one piece of art on the refrigerator at a time, and that is all. And they get their very own magnet for it, so it feels really special. And then I also just made some fall leaves magnets because I was trying to make fall DIYs. So I drew some line art leaves. All right, so the second DIY here is actually a remake of an old project. I made this like the first year that I was blogging for sure. And I really loved it, but it definitely got broken probably by one of my children. This one probably will too eventually, but that's why it's awesome that it's only a dollar. So this is a cork chalkboard. I just used a sheet of cork. You can get these really thin sheets of cork, or you can get cork tiles, which are a little bit thicker, and that's what I used for the first one. And then you make some holes in the top to tie it. I used leather cord to tie, and I had this on hand, but I'm pretty sure you can get it from the dollar store as well. And then I just painted the chalkboard paint right on there. So I think that you can get chalkboard paint from the dollar store as well in these little tiny craft tubes. I had this on hand, so I just used what I had, but I like to just pour it straight on there and then brush it on. I really like the kind of not perfect look of the edges, so I try to accentuate the brush strokes here, but if you wanted a nice crisp line, you could definitely use painter's tape or washi tape and create a frame around the edge of your cork so that you had a perfect line when you peel back that tape. After you wait for your paint to dry completely, then it is good to prepare your chalkboard. Anytime you use chalk paint, or honestly, anytime you buy a new chalkboard, this is really great to do. You take a piece of chalk and you rub it on its side all over the chalkboard. I do up and down, and then I do across, and then you wipe that all off. So that chalk kind of gets all the pores of the chalkboard. And then when you write on it, it will erase easier next time and you won't be left with those shadows in the same way that you would if you wrote on a brand new chalkboard without doing this process. So then since I wanted it to be fall, I wrote fall is in the air. All right, so the last DIY is definitely the most complicated and time consuming DIY, but it's also my very favorite out of all of these projects. I made a macrame wall hanging and I added some kind of fall flowers to this, but you could add any kind of flowers. Honestly, none of these DIYs are super fallish. You can make them for any season. But I used an embroidery hoop, which I couldn't find at the Dollar Tree when I was there, but I did find at another dollar store. And then instead of using macrame cord, I just used this cotton twine that you use to like tie turkeys. It's called butcher's twine, so I don't know. But it's just cotton. 
exactly like macrame cord and it was a dollar so one roll of this stuff made this entire wall hanging and I did have a little tiny bit left over but not too much so this is the perfect amount to make an affordable wall hanging so I started by cutting my butcher's twine to length I did one big arms length for each piece and then you're gonna want to cut just a whole bunch of those need to cut 16 of these strings and then we're gonna start by looping them over the embroidery hoop and I use the embroidery hoop upside down so that I could cover the metal piece of it with the flowers and this is I believe called a lark's knot lark's head knot but if you are new to macrame I have a full video intro to macrame that shows four basic knots that you will use in any macrame wall hanging and that will be used in this. So if I go a little bit too fast for you here, make sure you hop over and watch that one first and then you'll have an easy time making this one because this one is super simple. This one actually only takes like this lark's head knot that you attach it with and then the double half hitch and one square knot. So I mean, really, really simple for macrame. All right, so you start by attaching eight of your strings on one top side of the embroidery hoop and then the other eight on the other side. And so if you're looking at this like it's a clock, that would be like 11 and one or 10 and two. And then the way that you attach them is by folding them in half and taking that loop of the folded end and looping it over and tucking the ends through. So once you've done that for all of your 16 pieces of string, then you're gonna want to tie those top two together just to create the point of the diamond in the middle here. So again, if you have not done macrame before, I'm gonna link that beginner's video where I go really slow through the knots and kind of troubleshoot with you, show it up close. But for now, I'm just gonna tell you what we're doing. So we're gonna go down the top sides of the diamond using a double half hitch. So you're gonna to wanna to take the strings from that first knot that you tied and those are going to become your traveling strings. So then you take each string that is hanging from each side and you do your double half hitch along that traveling string all the way down to the corner. Do that for both sides and then we're gonna turn that corner, come right back to the center, but before we do, we are going to add one square knot in the center just for a little bit extra and i did decide to add a couple extra strings in here to do my half knot around which just makes it look a little bit bigger it's the exact same knot just with extra strings as the center strands again that is all shown in detail in the beginner macrame video that i will link and we're going to try to level that with the corners and what height that will be before we start traveling back down the bottom edges of the diamond using the same traveling string. You just kind of fold it over and keep going. All right, when you get to the bottom of your diamond, you tie those two traveling strings together to create that point. And then I am taking every one of my strings and I'm just tying it to the bottom of the embroidery hoop out at the same angle that I did the top the best that I can. It wasn't perfectly center and I did not want to try to adjust that. So I just tied it onto the bottom of the embroidery hoop with a standard knot just to create the knot at the back of the embroidery hoop, kind of like the ones at the top are. So I did that and then to create a fringe or tassel or whatever all the way around the bottom of the embroidery hoop, I added that after the fact. So the first thing that I did is cover that bottom portion with flowers. I used fake flowers that I found at Dollar Tree when I went on my little shopping extravaganza and I slid all the leaves up to the top because I'm not going to use these whole stems. I'm just going to clip off the top and I used wire cutters to do that. If you don't have wire cutters, garden shears sometimes I use. I've used scissors before. It does damage your scissors a little bit because it is wire inside of these fake flowers. So once you've done that, you can start wiring them together and hot gluing them onto your embroidery hoop. So I used wire to kind of bunch a bunch of flowers together to keep them how I like them and to cut down on the amount of hot glue I'm gonna have to use. And I did this specifically so that I could pull these flowers off easier and replace them in the spring with something springy or pull them off at the holidays and replace them with some like evergreen or something like that. 
So the wire I'm using here is just floral wire. I know that you can get these at some dollar stores. I have a lot of it at home, so I just use that. And then I'm pretty sure I'm actually using a dollar store glue gun here too. So super simple, super affordable to do. And I'm just gluing the flowers in place where I like them and kind of the leaves wherever I want them. And I tried to make it equal on both sides and then fill out the center with some extra flowers that I cut even shorter. So I ended up cutting off the stems even shorter than I already had. And then after this, I thought I was done, but I went and decided I wanted to add more fringe to fill out the bottom of this macrame hoop. So I just took the leftover string and cut it into pieces and then glued it onto the back of the embroidery hoop where the flowers were to hang down to fill the gap between the two sections of string that are already dangling. And then I cut it all kind of to length and called it a day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. These are my favorite DIYs from all the things I bought in that first haul. And I feel like this was a ton of fun. I'd almost love to do it again, maybe for the holidays. Is that something you guys would be into? Drop a comment. Um, but for this one, I made these cute wood slice magnets. I made one for my dishwasher that says dirty and clean and ones for each of my kids art on the fridge so that they're limited to one magnet, um, which aren't fall themed. But then I also made some fall themed leaves and cute little heart one, which is actually my favorite, but again, not really fall themed. It's like woodsy and woodsy is fall, right? Um, I also made this cork chalkboard, which is not a new DIY for me. I actually made one very similar to this the first year that I was blogging, so six years ago, um, but it got broken somewhere along the way and I loved it. So when I saw this sheet of cork, I was excited to make it again and I just put a fall saying on it so that it looked all fallish. But the colors, these really warm tones are totally fall too. And then last but not least, I feel like my most time consuming and intricate DIY is this macrame here. The leaves are making these not sit straight, there we go. Is this dollar store macrame. And the only thing, this embroidery hoop was not at the Dollar Tree, but I know that there are other dollar stores in my town, so I just used one that I had. And then this is kind of fall foliage from Dollar Tree, and this is actually like the string that you use to tie up turkeys one ball for one dollar and I made this whole thing and I love how it's kind of natural colored it's just cotton and it has different flux of color I think it's really beautiful and I'm definitely gonna be buying that string to make more macrame because that's really affordable all right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up below and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. And if you wanna see more dollar store DIYs, make sure to drop that in the comments so that I know and that I can put that on my calendar. See you guys next time.